Hi, good evening. It's around five here. Uh, today again we'll be discussing about uh, one more scenario-based question of the Australian Part 1 dental exam. I think just a week more to go for the March 2024 candidates. Uh, yeah, I think next week it would be exactly a month uh, from you giving your exam. Results are expected either by Saturday or Sunday or next week, something like that. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> good, good, good luck to all of you. So, uh, let's start discuss, discussing about this very important topic. Uh, it's regarding palpable diagnosis and you will get minimum two to three questions in your ADC exam. And uh, in your daily life, as a clinical practitioner, uh, pulpal treatment is the bread and butter of dentistry and uh, accurate diagnosis of it is very, very important for you to know what treatment to administer and pulpal pain is also one of the most painful pains uh, that one can experience. So the way you'll handle the patient, uh, you can make a patient for life, you know, as the patient, even though everything is sorted out, the patient will keep coming back to you for checkups and or will keep referring you because the way you have handled their pain, they'll always remember that. And palpal pain usually constitutes as an emergency pain because it's so painful that sometimes even medicines can't help if it's really inflamed irreversible pulpitis. So the patient has to see you no matter what it, he just can't take a medicine and pretend that the pain's gone no you can't it won't allow you to function in any way so anyways a uh, very important topic mark it in your notebooks read more about it and uh, there is a book called as Selzer on pulp you know i've mentioned this previously in one of my videos lovely book if you can read that the way the author has mentioned it's this thick book okay uh I mean, you get so much of deeper level of understanding of the pulp. Your diagnosis becomes bang on. You just know what are the right questions to ask. And me as a person, I think I, be, I became a hundred times better clinician after I read that book. Though that book was not mentioned in the course, references were mentioned. And one of the other two professors did mention that if you have time, you should go. And I'm so glad in my library we had that book and uh, I'm so glad I was a nerd at that time. I'm still a nerd, but uh, I did go and take an effort to read and I Xeroxed that book uh, and I have it in my collection. So, beautiful book. Uh, my entire pulpal understanding and uh, all the patients that I treat with respect to the pulpal diagnosis, I dedicate it to that book. So let's go and uh, start solving this particular questionnaire. A 45-year-old patient is visiting your dental clinic with a complaint of sensitivity to hot and cold temperatures in her lower molar. Additionally, she experiences pain that keeps her awake at night. When you have a patient who says, I feel sensitive to hot and cold, and I have a pain that wakes me up from night, probably there are more than one tooth involved you know there are at least two teeth which are involved hot and cold sensitivity might be happening from one tooth and uh, pain at night is happening probably because of the other tooth because see two types of pulp are reacting in a different way if if there is spontaneous uh, long lasting pain especially at night then that tooth will not be having sensitivity it would always be having spontaneous sh shooting pain but if you just have a uh, hot and cold, so there can be two different teeth involved. So open your ears and mind and keep in mind uh, that don't just focus uh, on the major pain. The hot and sensitive tooth might equally be important to be treated. So uh, don't if the patient says I'm having pain here, don't directly jump on to examine that area. As a clinician, I'm talking to you. Always examine the entire mouth before coming to the chief complaint because if you come with the chief complaint, your focus will be directed there and you may miss out the other things which are happening or maybe contributing to this one and then later on you'll be like, I made a boo-boo, you know, <laughs> I, I should have examined. So take your time when the patient is on the examination table, examine everything and even if the patient is insisting, no doctor, the pain is here, you're examining here. Tell them, it's okay, let me examine the entire mouth so that I don't miss out anything and then the patient will appreciate that. And once you are done examining the actual chief complaint area, 
go back to all the other teeth which are also having problems and briefly discuss so that the patient is aware and doesn't blame you later on that I did go to the dentist but they never explained to me about the other teeth that I was having blah 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 so uh, yeah okay so here additionally see uh, even the question mentions additionally she experiences pain that keeps her awake at night and we have an IOPA with us so in the IUPA, we can see that there is a molar uh, which apparently has a cavity quite close to the nerve. Now the pain after odonto test, probably that's either an electric pulse test or an end device, lingers for a while. You took an X-ray. Would what would be the most likely to be suffering from the patient? See a lingering pain after any test. Or a pain that keeps you awake at night has to be irreversible pulpitis. There, there cannot be any other question. Now, in cells, are why I just <coughs> mentioned that book, they have given the pathophysiology of why a particular tooth feels pain only on cold objects. They have explained the entire mechanism, which is so beautiful, why a particular tooth will have pain only on hot stimulus and whenever it's on the hot that means definitely the pulpal health is degenerating as in it's going down 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 it's no longer irreversible or reversible it's going towards pulpal necrosis and again they have explained it very nicely about that then how much is the pressure in the pulpal chamber what's the normal pressure in the pulpal chamber what happens in the necrosis etc etc so uh, based on this uh, question and the symptoms presented 100 percent it's irrever irreversible pulpitis now these type of questions i really like in the adc exam because you read the question you know there is only one answer you don't have to break your head over it just click move on you save some time because you require so much time in the exam and you're such and you are and you have such short time actually all those people who have given the exam for the first time or the second time you know what i'm talking about right uh it cannot be pulpal necrosis so far because the patient uh, is responding to that sometimes in pulpal necrosis when the tooth is non-vital dead tooth there may be no response at all so since the patient did respond and the pain did linger for a while and uh, pain persisting at night all this points towards irreversible pulpitis what is the best means of differentiating endodontic from periodontal pathosis now this question, in spite of me explaining like 100 times and the psychology being very simple behind this question, still people attempt it wrong. I don't know why. See, endodontic and periodontal pathosis. In a periodontal pathosis, a pure periodontal lesion, it's a periodontal lesion. The name itself says it belongs to the periodontia. Pulp is not involved in the initial stages of the periodontal lesion. So the nerve will be vital, as simple as that. Later on, the perio lesion can turn into an endo lesion and create problems in the tooth. But a pure, pure periodontal lesion, abscess, anything, in that the tooth will always be vital. Understand that. But in an endo lesion, when I say an endo lesion, it has to do something with the pulp. So the pulp will be having some kind of pathosis. Okay. So the best means of differentiating an endo from a pure periodontal pathosis is the pulp vitality testing. If there is an abscess, and you very well know if there is an abscess, and if it's because of the tooth, the tooth will be non-vital. But if there is just an abscess and you cannot determine whether it's because of the tooth or it's a periodontal lesion, you do the pulp vitality testing. If the pulp responds, it's periodontal. If the pulp is not responding because it's necrosed, which it should be, if it's a tooth lesion, then it will not respond. As simple as that. Percussion, radiograph, location of the swelling are irrelevant. Absolutely. You have recommended root canal treatment based on your diagnosis, but the patient is unwilling to undergo the procedure with a rubber dam. Additionally, the patient mentions having a wedding to att attend in a three days. Okay, The patient is in pain. He wants the treatment to be done immediately. And he says, I will not allow you to place a rubber dam. Now, you're giving Australian dental exam. In Australia, as per the guidelines, you should not do the root canal treatment if you don't put a rubber dam. 
I know we in other countries sometimes don't put rubber dam and you proceed with the treatment. But that is not allowed in Australia. Remember that you need to know how to put the rubber dam. And you have to work under the rubber dam. It's mandatory. So since you can't put a rubber dam, what other choices you have? You can tell her either to go to the specialist. But again, she's going to say the same thing to the specialist. Even the specialist cannot work without a rubber dam. Or you can give the option of extraction. Now you may ask, why can't we refer to the endodontist which is mentioned in the options out here? Referring to a specialist is a whole process in Australia. It's not like in other country you call, okay, the patient is sitting, can you come in 15, 20 minutes? No, that doesn't happen. You have to properly prepare a referral letter and tell the patient that the specialist is going to charge more and the specialist appointment may not be available in the next day or even on that day. And the patient is still saying that she doesn't want the rubber dam. So even the specialist would be then giving her the option of extraction. So advice extraction becomes the right choice of answer. I hope the doubts are cleared about why I'm not choosing refer her to the endodontist. While checking the patient dental records, you noticed something abnormal related to the lower posterior molars. What complication has occurred? Now here we have a part of the OPG of the left side and we see some, the first, the first glance if I see, I'll immediately see that these two molars are having some kind of cavity and I see some kind of swellings and I see a lot of swellings and then I see something unusual which is this. Now, probably this radiopic material which is there below the root is due to the leakage of a sealer and it's right in the nerve canal or on top of it or impinging it something because it's, it's in the pathway of the canal. So, what complication has occurred? Let's see the options. There is a supernumerary tooth. I can't find one. There is a radiopic matter in the inferior dental canal beneath the lower second molar. That's true. All posterior molars have fillings. All posterior molars have filling is true, but that is not a complication. A complication is something which shouldn't be there or something has happened which is not normal and that is this radiopic material. Again, a very straightforward question, a straightforward answer. There is no ambiguity. I really love such questions and you should also love such questions. <laughs> Now, what symptoms might the patient will be experiencing because of that radiopaid thing? Nothing abnormal, probably right. You know, altered sensation in the lower lip, again right. Pus collection in the inferior dental canal. Now, pus collection is going a little too far, which it can happen. But uh, it's, it's, if there is pus collection, there has to be some swelling. The question doesn't mention that. Uh, Nothing abnormal is a possibility. It's not a wrong option. There can be times when nothing may be happening. But might be the patient experiencing in the inferior canal. I think my son knows I'm sitting here. So, yeah, I'll just quickly finish with this. Altered sensation in the lower lip is, is quite a right answer. Because uh, the canal... The nerve is passing through and something is impinging on it or irritating it. It might change the sensation in the lower lip. So that becomes the right answer of choice. Though option A is not wrong either. But I'll choose option B because that is a possibility of happening. So here uh, we have finished uh, this scenario based question. I think this was question number 5 of mock 20. Uh, mock 20 is basically the March 2002 3 paper. Uh, I hope you have understood uh, how I'm thinking, how I'm approaching the question. And this has to happen very fast in the exam. So practice, practice, practice the marks. Uh, I've given all the books which are present in the book section of Target ADC Facebook page. You have to send a request. I will accept it. Once I accept, you have access to the files. I usually, the ac I usually accept all the f requests on a Sunday. But yesterday I was very busy. So probably today I'll be sitting uh, in an hour or so and accepting all the requests. Uh, for all those people who have uh, mentioned their email ID and uh, whether they have been given the initial assessment by the ABC or not. Uh, because I don't want uh, unnecessarily people in the group who then just keep on luring other candidates by saying 
in the comment section that we cleared the exam and we have the question paper and when you go on their profile there is nothing so it's kind of a scam or something and i don't want them to use my group for their scamming purposes hence uh, i made it private and uh, you can always email me on adc mock test adc written mock test at gmail.com you can see in the replies i've mentioned that or uh, you can find me on Instagram, Dr. Underscore Garima Underscore Khandelwal. Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much about it. Read more on pulpal pathosis. You will definitely get a question. And even if you don't get a question, uh, you'll become a better clinical practitioner. Hopefully you like this video. Hopefully it helped you in some or the other way that you could learn something. Share your comments. I also learn a lot of things from you. So have a nice day. Bye-bye.